Hello, Nimen Hao. My name is Robert Thomas, and I'm the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Wayne State University in Detroit, Michigan. And it's my great pleasure to introduce this film that describes a unique summer service learning program that takes place in rural China. This program is carried out in conjunction with Tsinghua University, the lead institution in Beijing, China, along with many universities in the United States, including Wayne State. In this film, you'll learn about poverty alleviation and the impact that the summer service learning program has on young people in China who are in poverty. Many of them are living on a dollar a day. It's hard to imagine. And their way out of this is, of course, to attend a university in China. In the film, you'll see volunteer students from Tsinghua and from American universities describe the sites that they visited, the challenges that they had in teaching in and outside of the classrooms, and the many successes that they experienced. I hope that you'll be challenged and interested as you watch this film, and that perhaps next summer, you'll choose to join the Summer Service Learning Program in rural China. Teaching in Youyang in Chongqing. Yangshin County, Hubei Province. Well, we went to Huadda, Inner Mongolia. I taught in USC County in Sichuan Province. I was teaching in Taiquan County, uh, which is in Hunan Province. We're in the city called Shichian in the Guizhou Province. I'm teaching in Huangshi, Yangxin, Hubei. Vocational Education Center in Yangxin County, Hubei Province. The site is not as peasanty rural as I thought it would be. There's lots of people here, there's lots of standard buildings. School is actually pretty well developed. I walked in thinking it's going to be this one-story building with maybe like two classrooms and like wooden chairs. But we walked in and it was a six-story building. It was actually pretty well furnished. It was a mostly secluded area with scattered villages. We were teaching mostly in a E majority area, so this is traditionally what they wear. This is uh, their hat. This symbolizes a hero. I don't think I'm much of a hero. And this on the side symbolizes fire. Uh, the E people actually have a fire festival which we attended and they basically light a bunch of bonfires and dance and sing around it all night. We were all freaking out because we thought like we were going to be you know staying in huts and you know teepees and tents and all the rest of it and then all of a sudden it pulls us up into this big city and you know there's buildings all over the place. There's a huge line of students waiting for us from the school gate to the teaching building. We feel so much warmly welcomed here but also a little bit scared. <laughs> I was told before we came here, we're not so much teaching them, we're giving them hope. Like the Chinese students that come here, they give them hope to try to go to a good university. We'd walk up to the school and all the kids would be on the second row and they'd be waiting for us and I'd get there and I'd wave and they'd wave and I was like, all right, I'm ready to start school. Well, in class it was actually quite enjoyable. It wasn't all serious, like a lecture type of class. We played around, we joked, we had free talk. And outside of class, we actually had some basketball games and hung out at night. But we were primarily teaching teachers rather than students. Um, and we got to see a little bit of what Chinese teachers go through on a daily basis and a lot of the pressures and stresses that, that they are under in order to prepare their students to get into high school for their high school entrance examinations. We were able to kind of go on our own route could go into the classroom, kind of teach the way we wanted, and it was kind of a self-finding process. I think the trial and error really helped because you learn as you go on, like this works, this doesn't. It was really a lot of fun. We got to teach the stuff that we were interested in. I got to talk to them about sports. I got to talk to them about, you know, American food, about differences between American high schools and Chinese high schools, and the kids were just so passionate to learn everything. It was really a great experience. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these kids, when you ask, when I ask them questions like, what do you want to be, where do you want to go, 
they would say, well, I want to go here, but I don't think it's possible. Within a 10-day span, there's only so much you can do. You're not going to teach them English in 10 days. And if you realize that going in, I think it softens the blow of any problems that you might have about it. In the classroom, they stay in their desks. Um, they're very respectful. They're shy, like we're trying to teach them, you know, you can raise your hand and ask a question, but I, they're a little more shy when it comes to that. I've had a very varied experience. Students have been either extremely participatory or not so much. They kept on reassuring us that the students were shy, you know, the students are so shy. And so after a while, you just get used to, you know, going for it with teaching, like you ignore the lack of reaction from your students and you just have to hope that some of them are really interested, they just are afraid to say anything. Over there, we seem to be giving them a lot of encouragement and a lot of um, reason to study English. After we worked with them for several days, they, they started to see some of the benefits, um, particularly the English teachers, of changing or incorporating some of the American learning styles into their education system. Even though it's small, but I think it's making progress because we're opening them up to the world, and I think that's really important for the kids because most rural China they're not very open. I really feel like I help some students out, maybe not with English per se, but with confidence, with motivation, and letting them know that, yeah, they can do something if they really put their mind to it, if they really want to. If you're going to let your mind run wild, why not let it run wild in a positive direction? And so that's what I tried to tell my kids. I never told them, no, you can't, no, you can't. Yes, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Keep believing you can do it. Kids were crying, kids were singing poems, or reading poems, singing songs. I mean, the party that they threw, going away party for us, it, it wasn't fake. It wasn't them just trying to be humble and, you know, oh, hey, thanks a lot for coming, you know, here's a couple pieces of candy, you know, we appreciate you being here. It was genuinely, thank you. Thank you for coming, and I, I don't feel we did enough to warrant what they did for us, but they were truly impacted saw these kids with you know a new kind of excitedness and new kind of exuberance for just learning and life in general. The Xinhua students were great, they were really great for translating and we really were cohesive as a team. So we were able to do a lot of team teaching which really I think benefited not only us but the students as well. The Xinhua students, they were passionate, they were helpful, they were extremely communicative. The interaction between teachers was very good and we got to know each other very well. My first class I went in there, I did a topic about dating and I would take my Tsinghua partner Jeffrey and I'd say, hey look, we're dating and I'd hold his hand and everyone would like, you know, giggle and start like, and then Jeffrey started to loosen up too. So I think by the end of the trip they were all a lot more used to the idea that, hey, we have different ideas, we have different things that we want to kind of expose them to. And It's been really fun getting to know them, and the girls especially have been very inviting and welcoming to me and my other American teammate. I am constantly learning something new every day about China. It's opened up my eyes to how different Chinese can be. In America, we often think of them as one combined, united, uniform country, but I think each person is an individual here. What really stuck out was how simple the people's lives were, but how happy they were. I grew up 50%, 75% below the poverty line in America, but it doesn't even touch what these kids do. And yet they're so happy. I always knew I had it good, but I never realized how good. Each kid had a smile that no person could fake. They all genuinely felt like they had the biggest treasure in the world that they wanted to show me. And it was really an eye-opening experience to see what these kids go through and that the fact that they don't give up, that they still are like, I am going to go to school. I want to be an English teacher. I want to help kids like how you came and helped us, Sophia. I want to be a Laosha like you. I needed those kids more than they needed me. And it was, uh, it was just something else. Ha, ha, ha.